Hello, everybody. Today's lesson, we are focusing on Ezekiel. So we are still in unit two and the focus on, on Ezekiel, okay? Moral responsibility demanded, all right? That is our focus today, moral responsibility demanded. And this is lesson 11, all right? For those of you that are following along with me, in the Radiant Life uh, book, it is lesson 11, moral responsibility demanded, and the focus is of the prophet Ezekiel. All right, so we're still looking at Ezekiel. So the central truth for today, followers of Jesus Christ are responsible to walk in holiness. All right, so we are responsible. We are held accountable for this. And it is our responsibility to walk in holiness, okay? So today's lesson continues to explore the significance of Ezekiel's call to a ministry within the prophetic office. In this part of the story, the focus shifts to responsibility. Ezekiel's responsibility to the people he was called to reach and their individual responsibility to return to God with repentance and obedience in response to Ezekiel's prophetic warnings, all right, warnings. All right, so let's start thinking here, but oh, but before we start thinking, here is the scripture here too, I want you to think about um, as we go within the lesson here, and this is coming from Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, the 32nd verse. I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Okay. And in here is the NLT version. I don't want you to die, says the sovereign Lord. Turn back and live. All right. So he's saying, turn back and live. And that is coming from Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, the 32nd verse. All right, so let's start thinking about moral responsibility. And the first thing to think about is what common warnings can you think of? Warnings, warnings, because that's what Ezekiel task here is all about. And that's what we're going to notice here. Um, he was referred to as the watchman. So he's giving out warnings. So what common warnings can you think of? And I'll put a few pictures here just to get us to start thinking, um, like with traffic signals, whenever we see the red light or especially the yellow light, the yellow light is really giving us a warning, you know, that the light is about to change, you need to slow down, warning. Um, we got the stop sign. Uh, we have the EMS blue lights. Um, even the police lights, those are giving us warnings, signals to let us know that caution, danger is up ahead, okay? And so this is what Ezekiel here is all about. He is here to give or issue out warnings to the people. And now the question at hand is, are the people going to listen? Are they going to take heed to the warnings? Or are they just going to keep on doing whatever they want to do? All right, so let's look at the reading here, um, and it says here in the passage, it says, you and I are likely not prophets. We may never function in any kind of prophetic ministry. However, we all need spiritual vision so that we can give timely warnings to all those around us who are unaware of impending spiritual dangers. The question is, will we speak out and try to reach others or will we keep quiet? and be satisfied with our own sense of security in walking with God. So the question at hand, will we open our mouths? Will we give a warning? Or will we just keep quiet and don't say anything? All right. And so this is the task of Ezekiel. This is what he was doing here. All right. The watchman. So today, first to get started, it says warning of impeding doom appointed to watch and warn. So we're going to come from Ezekiel, the third chapter, the 16th through the 21st verse, okay? So we're going to focus on this and looking at this warning of impeding doom that Ezekiel was trying to get the people to see. So yes, he is going to give them a warning, okay? 
And then also in the passage right here, it says, um, <clears throat> it says the great reformer, Martin Luther once said, you are not only responsible for what you say, but also for what you do not say. There is a time for silence and a time to speak. When others are in grave danger or when they are going down a hazardous path, we must not be silent. In the passages we will study in this lesson, God impressed on Ezekiel his responsibility to sound the alarm when people were courting spiritual disaster through their behavior. That this admonition applies to us as well. What responsibility do we have to warn our wayward friends, families, and neighbors? So giving them warnings, warnings. I want y'all to keep thinking that, putting that in your head about warnings, okay? All right, so let's look at Ezekiel, the third chapter, the 16th through the 21st verse, and it states, <clears throat> and at the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, and you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them from their evil ways in order to save their life, that wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person, and they do not turn from their wickedness or from their evil ways, they will die for their sin, but you will have saved yourself. Again, when a righteous person turns from their righteousness and does evil, and I put a stumbling block before them, they will die. Since you did not warn them, they will die for their sin. The righteous things that people that person did will not be remembered, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the righteous person not to sin and they do not sin, they will surely live because they took warning and you will have saved yourself. So let's look at this. Hmm, more responsibility. Telling Ezekiel this that he must warn. It was his duty. It was his responsibility. And God put a heavy responsibility on him. Okay. Because I knew at times Ezekiel didn't want to say anything, but he was being obedient to God and listening to what God instructed him and told him to do. All right. And so in an emergency situation, anyone who knows something that is vital to the safety and security of the community is obligated to share that information. This is true in a spiritual sense as well. In Ezekiel III, we see that this was the role God gave to Ezekiel when he called the prophet to be a watchman for the Judean exiles, okay? So Ezekiel is the watchman. And so I looked up the definition and I got some definitions here because it just came up into my mind, like the watchman, what is that? What, you know, what are their responsibilities? What is their task? The watchman basically is to watch. Um, they're like a security guard or just a guard in general. They can be a caretaker. They could be a warden. They could be a doorman. Those were some of the definitions that I found that relates to what a watchman does and that's their responsibility. So, but basically their task is to watch, all right? Their task is to watch. And that is what God instructed Ezekiel here to do in this situation. He was here to watch, all right, to watch. All right, and according to the passage right here, it says, seven days after his inaugural vision, God spoke to Ezekiel again. This time, the Lord impressed on Ezekiel that his ministry will be similar to the work of a watchman. In the ancient world, it was the watchman's duty to stand upon the city wall or in another strategic location and watch for signs of approaching danger. If the watchman detected danger, it was his responsibility to raise the alarm so that the inhabitants and their leaders could rally to defend the city. If for some reason a watchman knew or should have known an attack was in progress and did nothing to alert the city, he will be responsible for the loss of life and possibly military disaster that followed. 
God told Ezekiel that he made Ezekiel a spiritual watchman for the people and that if he failed to warn them when danger was approaching, he would be held accountable for the lives that were lost. Conversely, if he did raise the alarm and the people did not listen, then their deaths would be on their own hands. The, responsi the responsibility of the watchmen was to watch and to warn. The responsibility of the people was to listen to the watchmen and act accordingly. Every believer is called to warn those in their circle of influence of the dangers of sin. How many of us encounter many women who need the gospel yet never warn them of their spiritual jeopardy? To what degree are we accountable to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our friends and co-workers? Yet, as we see in Ezekiel, sinners are not the only ones who need a warning. The Lord exhorted Ezekiel that he must also warn the righteous who stray from the right path. If righteous people turn away from their righteous behavior and ignore the obstacles I put in their way, they will die. Believers are accountable for their disastrous choices if they abandon God and embrace sin. So let's look at this question here to get us to start thinking about moral responsibility. What are some reasons why people are sometimes reluctant to speak to someone about their lifestyle, even though they know that the individual in question is on the brink of disaster in their life? Like they know that they are on the brink of disaster in their life. So why are sometimes or some reasons why we are reluctant to speak to someone about this? What are we concerned about? What are we worried about? One thing that we are worried about is being rejected, um, afraid, afraid the person will reject them and not listen to them, okay? And, and it does happen. Sometimes you might tell a person that you might need to slow down or you might need to take it easy. And then the person will get in attack mode. They want to defend themselves. And sometimes it even breaks up friendships over things like this right here. But as a true friend, you want to look out for the person. So if you see them going down the wrong path or you see them on, like it says, the break of disaster, shouldn't you say something to them if this is your friend? I don't think if this is your friend, you will want to see them hurt. So you would say something as a true friend, whether or not they get upset, if they get angry with you, they just get angry with you. But it's like, okay, I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna say something because you're my friend. I care about you, okay? And so, and in this situation here, this is what Ezekiel's job was to do. He was appointed to watch and warn the people. But at the same time, even though we're talking about biblical times, we can connect to this. We can relate to this. When there were times when you warned someone, or maybe somebody warned you about something, think about your reaction. How did you handle it whenever they came to you to warn you about something? Okay? Because I, for one, I can relate to this when someone told me something that um, was, I was on a brink of disaster and someone came and told me a warning, you know, giving me, you know, a, a heads up or like an eye opener. Because sometimes it is an eye opener when someone simply says something to you, like all before you're not paying attention, you're not noticing it. And then here comes someone is like, you know what, you might need to slow down. You might need to watch out. And then sometimes a little light bulb will click in your head like, you know what, they're right. I do need to slow down. I do need to take it easy, okay? But then however, there are times too when some people do reject people um, for trying to help, okay? And that's all it's about. You're just trying to help somebody. You're not trying to degrade them or anything like that. You just want to help, okay? You just want to help. And we have situations where we've seen where some people are, Unfortunately, they might be on drugs, okay? And you see that they're going downhill. They might have lost their job. They might have lost their home. They might have lost their family. And it's like beforehand, somewhere, somebody probably came to them and gave them a warning that if you don't stop, this is what is going to happen to you. 
Um, I mean, it is all kinds of things. Okay. I wrote down from drugs, um, people being alcoholics, uh, people uh, being sexually active, you know, with numerous people. And then here comes somebody, give them a warning. Girl, oh boy, you might need to slow down. This is not working out. This is not looking good. And sometimes we listen and sometimes we don't. Sometimes some people accept the help and it's sometimes people reject the help, okay? So that is still part of moral responsibility as a Christian, all right? You wanna help, okay? You wanna help people, all right? And then the next part of this, it says waiting for the message, all right? And we're looking at Ezekiel, the third chapter, the 22nd through the 27th verse. So we're gonna read a little ahead where first God gave him instructions to watch and warn. And now let's look specifically, what did God told Ezekiel to do? All right, so what did he instructed him to do? It, it looks like I didn't put the scripture on here. Okay, so let me go back. I still got my Bible right here as a backup. All right, so I am going to read out of my Bible here, um, Ezekiel, the third chapter, the 22nd through the 27th verse. All right, and it says here, the hand of the Lord was on me there, and he said to me, get up and go out to the plain, and there I will speak to you. So I got up and I went out to the plain and the glory of the Lord was standing there like the glory I had seen by the Kiber River and I fell face down. Then the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. He spoke to me and said, go shut yourself inside your house and you son of man, they will tie with ropes. You will be bound so that you cannot go out among the people. I will make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth so that you will be silent and unable to rebuke them for they are a rebellious people. But when I speak to you, I will open your mouth and you shall say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Whoever will listen, let them listen. And whoever will refuse, let them refuse. For they are a rebellious people. So that was the message that God told Ezekiel. That was the message that he told Ezekiel. Okay. And so speaking God's message is a heavy responsibility. Those who undertake this responsibility must take care that the words they speak are his words and do not come from their own hearts. All right. And so a question here I want y'all to start thinking about. It says, what are some reasons for people to be cautious when presuming to speak for God? Why is it necessary for them to be cautious? if they're saying that this is coming from the word of God. All right, and so as you're thinking, I'm gonna read this short passage here. And it says, after charging Ezekiel to faithfully carry out his role as watchman, the Lord gave him his first assignment, go to your house and shut yourself in. What follows is a description of a circumstance that is unusual for a prophet. God would make Ezekiel mute and unable to speak to the people to whom he had been sent. Nevertheless, God assured him, when the time was right, I will loosen your tongue and let you speak. This was a powerful message. Ezekiel was not to speak expirationally from his own heart or at his own discretion. He was to wait on a word from God. That way, whenever Ezekiel spoke, he could speak with the authority that accompanied God's word. So what are some reasons for people to be cautious when presuming to speak for God? One thing I wrote down here is they need to make sure it is coming from God and not their own personal agenda. So yes, because if you're saying that God told you to say this and, you know, yeah, you need to make sure that it was God telling you to do this, not something that you thought of 
your own personal agenda or your own personal view that it does come from God. And so we do need to be cautious about that because from time to time, we do have people that love to throw God in the conversation and claim that God told them to say this and to say that. And it does get confusing sometimes. It does cause a lot of confusion if you are not speaking from God, because God might have already showed that person one thing, and then here you come contradicting what God already told them. So it can cause a lot of confusion. So you have to be careful. You have to be cautious. Whenever you are telling someone something that God said to do, you got to be careful about it, okay? And making sure that it is coming from God, all right? <clears throat> All right, so this concludes part one here, warning of impeding doom. So Ezekiel was appointed to watch and warn, and then Ezekiel was waiting for the message. So God had his tongue stuck to the top of his mouth where he could not speak. He was muted, but God said, in the right time, <clears throat> I will give you the words to say. <clears throat> All right, so stay tuned now for part two that goes in further and looking more so at Ezekiel and looking at his task as the watchman. All right.